Picking a controller can be a very daunting process, as there are a wide variety of controllers out there, each with their own set of features, pros, and cons. The sheer volume of information can make shopping for a controller difficult. Today, I'm going to help you through the staggering amount of information out there so you can pick the right controller for your own project. Whether you're looking for a way to schedule watering for your lawn, landscape, farm, or garden, or any mix of applications, I'm going to walk you through what you need to consider to make the best choice for your own project. Before I dive in, if you're running your irrigation system from an outdoor hose bib to a drip system, you'll probably want to go with a water timer instead of a controller. The water timers work great for a large amount of applications, including smaller drip systems. If you'd like to learn more, check out the video there in the top right. It's a guide to water timers. You will find most irrigation controllers can be broken down into a couple broad categories, AC and DC, and indoor and outdoor. These two categories are the foundation upon which controllers are built. Of course, there are other considerations to take into account when looking for a controller. Zones. How many zones do you need? Will you be expanding in the future and require more? Programming. Do you maybe need atypical watering cycles, such as in seconds rather than minutes? Are you watering a dense section of turf where water is slow to permeate the soil? Sensors. Are you looking to include a rain-free sensor or even a soil moisture sensor? Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Do you want to be able to operate your controller remotely or have it communicate with local cloud weather data to automatically adjust the watering cycles? These are some of the questions that you've no doubt thought about and asked yourself. I'm going to dive into each one so that you have the information you need to make a good decision. First, let's take a look at some of the features that are common across nearly all controllers. Let's define some of those common features. Specifically, start time, the time that the irrigation cycle begins, runtime, which is also known as duration, and frequency, which is how often the irrigation cycle occurs. Every controller's start time, runtime, and frequency can be customized to varying degrees, manually or with the use of sensors or apps. All controllers will also need to be wired to the valves. This is mostly the same across all controllers, but does bear mentioning. Fortunately, the vast majority of controllers and valves are cross-compatible. This means a controller from one brand is very likely to be compatible with a solenoid valve from another brand, so long as they both use the same current. By current, I refer to AC and DC. AC and DC simply refer to the type of electric they're compatible with. AC, or alternating current, and DC meaning direct current. AC controllers are compatible with AC solenoids. DC controllers are compatible with DC solenoids. You can usually tell the difference between an AC solenoid and a DC solenoid by looking at their wires. An AC solenoid typically has the same color wire because it doesn't matter which one you use for the common or the hot. Whereas a DC solenoid will have a different color for each wire because the positive and the negative do matter. If you'd like to learn how to wire the solenoid on your valves to your controller, check out the link there at the top right. You don't need to be an electrician to pick the right power types. If you plan to power your controller by plugging it into the wall or hardwiring it, you're going to be looking for an AC controller. If you prefer to use a battery powered controller or a solar controller, in most cases, you're going to be looking for a DC controller. Most controllers can also be categorized as either indoor or outdoor controllers. While outdoor controllers can be used inside, indoor controllers should not be used outside. This is because outdoor controllers always come with a weather-resistant case that protects it from the elements, and a lot of indoor ones do not. Some outdoor controllers will have to be hardwired, and some of them do not come with a wall transformer just to plug it in. However, the vast majority of indoor controllers do come equipped with a wall transformer that allows it to be simply plugged into the wall. Most DC controllers are outdoor controllers. This is because their primary use is in locations without power or locations where the indoors may not always be accessible to the person maintaining the system. Zone capacity is also something common to all irrigation controllers. The most commonly used are 1 to 12 zone controllers, but 24, 36, 48, and even higher zone counts are available for applications that need it. In regard to the irrigation system, each zone will have its own valve. And, except for special circumstances, each valve will run independent of the others. One thing to keep in mind, when you're working with controllers, you'll often hear about zone 
and station. Now, they do almost mean the same thing, and they are often used interchangeably. However, technically, zone is the section in the yard. Station is the corresponding number on the controller. Thus, station one in your controller will water zone one in your yard or landscape. This zoning allows you to customize the watering cycle for each area individually. For example, the raised beds in the garden that are watered by drip irrigation are not going to need the same watering cycle that your front lawn does. Another thing to consider is if you're going to need a fixed or modular controller. Fixed controllers have a fixed number of zones. For example, a four zone fixed controller will never have more than four zones. Modular controllers allow you to add zones in the future, typically with an expansion module like this one. When considering a controller, make sure it has enough zones for all the different things you want it to water. If you plan to expand in the future, it's best to get a controller with more zones than what you currently will be using, as it's perfectly acceptable to have unused zones on the controller. If you're unsure, a modular controller might be a good choice, as you can always add zones down the line. Now, let's take a look at the physical features that are common on most AC controllers. We'll start with this rain burn. You'll notice it comes in a cabinet. Now, if this one has a lock, that means it's an outdoor cabinet. Keep in mind, many indoor controllers will also come in a cabinet. The lock is designed to help prevent vandalism or just general mischief in messing with the programmed irrigation cycles. On the back here, you'll notice the slot where you can hang the controller and your included mounting screws. The mounting screws are inside the controller. Now, let's take a look inside the controller. The first thing you'll notice is the log sheet where you can keep track of your zones and their watering programs. Over here, you'll see the faceplate, including the dial that has a lot of the functions. This includes off, Auto, which means it's going to run its programming watering cycles. Date and time, start times. Flow sensors, if you're using a flow meter of any kind. Seasonal adjust for fall and winter. Weather sensors to monitor things like rain, sun exposure. And finally, the water days, which is where you're going to program what days your irrigation system is going to run. The manual watering simply runs your irrigation system. So if you want to run it outside of a scheduled time, you simply turn it to the manual. Most controllers will have a rain delay feature somewhere included, even if they call it by something different. This one just happens to have it in the convenience of a button. Now, let's take a look behind the faceplate. Most controllers, particularly controllers that come in a cabinet, have a removable faceplate. And so a lot of the action actually goes on underneath this faceplate. For example, it's where the zone and sensor ports are, and a lot of times the mounting hardware. Here, you can see the electric transformer that leads to the wall plug. Here, you can see some of the ports, including the master valve port. Now, you'll notice there's a lot of extra space in the controller. That's for the wiring, and since this is a modular controller, for the expansion modules, whether it's to add more zones or add Wi-Fi functionality. Adding a module, whether it's Wi-Fi or zones, is easy. Simply plug and play. You just push it in, and then it's ready to accept your zone wires. Most controllers come with a battery backup or a permanent memory system in case the power goes out. Most of these won't operate your valves, but will allow you to use the screen to adjust your cycles and retain your program memory during power outages. We've seen some of the physical features of an AC controller. Now let's take a look at some of the physical features of a DC controller. The first thing you'll notice is that it's significantly smaller. And that's the case for most DC controllers because they're often placed right in the valve box out in the field. This also means their cases tend to be very weather resistant because they're always under the influence of the elements. You'll see it as a faceplate that's very similar to the AC controller, but a little bit more compact. Now, rather than the zone and station ports being inside the controller, you'll see they're here on the back. They've got these little fins up here, and what you can do, you pull one out, and it pulls the plug out so that you can wire your zone valves to this. Now, that's another difference I want to illustrate here. This is a DC controller that comes with the valve. You can see it's already wired. This would go in a valve box as one unit. Big difference from an AC controller, where you might run wire 10, 20, 30, even more feet from the valve to the back of the controller will be wired in. And finally, here is a multi-zone DC controller. You can see it's got its wiring attached here already, rather than have to run it through a punch out.
This one is just a Bluetooth controller, so it doesn't have the standard faceplate. But unlike AC controllers, it is still significantly smaller. With the overall broad features covered, let's take a look at some of the features that are not necessarily found in every controller. Cycle and Soak is a feature found on a lot of controllers. It's a special feature that breaks up a watering program into two separate actions, Cycle and Soak. This allows the soil time to absorb the water, which in turn helps prevent runoff and evaporation from water pooling on the surface. Cycle and Soak is a feature most often found on residential controllers that are used to water your lawn and turf. The cycle portion is how much of the total cycle it runs before swapping to the soak cycle. For example, let's say the controller was programmed to water a zone for 20 minutes, but water starts to pool on the surface after just five minutes. The soil, in turn, takes about 10 minutes to absorb that water. With this in mind, the cycle parts of the cycle and soak would be five minutes. The soak portion, in turn, would be 10 minutes so that the soil could absorb the water. This means I'll be running my sprinklers on this zone for a total of 20 minutes. However, I will be running them in five minute cycles with 10 minute breaks in between to allow the water to soak into the soil. Most controllers are going to be residential controllers. Just make sure if you're looking for a controller for a home lawn and drip irrigation system that they aren't designated as greenhouse, propagation, or ag controllers, as these will all have programming features you won't need and will likely lack some of the ones you do. Controllers without this feature require you to manually create all of the start and run times. Those with the cycle and soak feature significantly simplify it. Not all controllers can have watering cycles shorter than a minute. So if you plan for any propagation or misting, you want to make sure the controller is capable of programming in units of time as short as a second. Some controllers capable of this will call it cyclical programming mode. Maximizing efficiency is one of the reasons people use irrigation controllers. To help with this, manufacturers have created sensors that can preempt the irrigation when certain conditions are met. A rain sensor, for example, will stop the irrigation cycle when the sensor has collected a specific amount of water. A soil moisture meter, on the other hand, will stop the irrigation when the sensor detects that the soil is sufficiently moist. A freeze sensor, which often comes as a combination with a rain sensor, stops the irrigation when freezing temperatures occur. These sensors protect your system and its components and help ensure your irrigation system is efficient and not watering when the soil is already moist or when it's raining or when freezing temperatures are present. Sensors are easy to connect to any controller, AC or DC. Just find the sensor ports or wires and connect them like you would any other zone. Be aware that some sensors are brand specific, so make sure to check compatibility before purchasing one for your controller. The Internet of Things is everywhere now, and irrigation controllers are no exception. Wi-Fi controllers are very versatile, and they can be operated and programmed anywhere there is internet access, and many of the apps can organize and handle multiple controllers. Now, this is great for people with multiple properties landscapers or homeowners associations who have to manage the irrigation for multiple properties. One of the best benefits to using a Wi-Fi controller are the apps that connect and operate from cloud weather data. This allows them to adjust watering cycles depending on local weather conditions, something that used to only be able to be accomplished with outside accessories such as rain and freeze sensors. Now, keep in mind, not all Wi-Fi controllers can be programmed at the controller itself. So, if you have spotty internet access or simply want the ability to program it traditionally, be sure the one you get comes with standard programming buttons on the faceplate itself. If Wi-Fi is more than what you need, but you still want to be able to program it with an app, many controllers now do offer Bluetooth connectivity. This means you'll have to be physically present and somewhat close to the controller and possibly even able to see it, but you will be able to program it with the app. This is great for landscapers who visit locations on site and for homeowners who are close to their controller. Landscapers who have to go on site also get to enjoy controlling the irrigation from a safe distance without the need to cross into a busy street or potentially impede business at a commercial location. Both indoor and outdoor controllers come with the necessary mounting hardware so that the controller can be mounted. Common locations are in a garage or utility closet for indoor controllers, directly to the house or outside the garage wall for outdoor controllers. You're not limited to those locations, however. Anywhere that can accept the mounting screws will get the job done. When finding a location to mount the controller, keep in mind the distance between the controller and the valves. 
You'll recall this is because the valves have to be wired directly to the controller. DC controllers, being battery or solar powered, are often mounted directly to the valve or in the valve box that they're servicing. Over the years, through experience and feedback, we've picked up some tips that can really help you maximize the benefits of your controller. Here are five tips. Number one, always make sure the time and date are correct on your controller, including the AM PM designation. We see people get this wrong all the time and then wonder why their program cycles aren't going off. The AM PM designation can be found on both the program and the clock time itself. Number two, if you are not using smart watering, make sure to manually adjust your watering cycles for seasonal changes. In almost all cases, you won't need near as much water in the fall and winter as you will during the hot days of summer. Some controllers come with seasonal adjust buttons that greatly simplify this process. Controllers have multiple programs available. This means if you're planning in advance, you can set up some of those programs to be your fall and winter cycles and just switch them when the time comes. If you're using a controller that needs to be hardwired, consider getting a licensed electrician to do it for you. Yes, this adds additional costs, but if you don't have experience with electric, it's the safest and most effective option. If you're looking to avoid hardwiring your controller or paying someone to do it for you, make sure you get a controller that has a wall plug, so you can just simply plug it in. Number four, most controllers come with a paper programming log that can fit into the cabinet of the controller. Consider filling this form out. It will help you keep track of every zone's watering cycle. Number five, and finally, don't lose your cabinet key. Yes, replacements are available, but it can sure be a pain not being able to access your controller while you're waiting for it to arrive. Navigating the world of irrigation controllers can seem like a maze, but armed with the right knowledge, you can confidently make the best choice for your needs. Remember, the key is understanding your specific requirements, be it the number of zones, the type of sensors, or the level of automation that you desire. If this was helpful, please give us a like below, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop it in the comments or reach out to us on dripdepot.com. We read and reply to every message we receive. You might be wondering how long your watering cycle should be. If you'd like to learn more, check out our video right there, and it covers how long you should run your irrigation system for. If you'd like to jump in and just get started, our controller buying guide can be found right there. It covers the information that we covered today and has some handy charts and links to all of our controllers.